course, yeah, yeah great yeah. movie. So yeah, how are you? I'm good, you know. Good, yeah, you look great. Fine. Okay, um, well, congratulations on this, and uh, what a beautiful, beautiful movie. And you know, I gotta ask you, Jim, when you when you see it for the first time and you hear your voice coming out of this fantastic owl, yeah. what was your reaction to I that? I loved it. I can't even tell you how much I loved it, just because it looks so incredible and it was just so amazing. And I'd never seen a 3D film before, and I was sitting in the audience like as a fan of the movie. Just totally blown away by the whole thing. And then suddenly my voice was coming out of one of these creatures. Was, it was a massive tick off the list, dream come true for me. <laughs> for me. Yeah, I understand that you always wanted to do a voiceover, an animated film. Yeah. Why did you want to do it so badly? Just because for that reason alone, you know, just to hear your voice coming out of this strange creature or whatever it is, the character that you're doing, is just such a bizarre thing for someone to sort of go through, you know. And I would have done it on, I mean, you know, I was close to sort of doing some other animations that were in no way anywhere near as the league of, you know, and the, and the quality and, and just the absolute stunning visuals that this managed to sort of achieve, yeah. you know. So I was so pleased that I held out and I was able to be a part of, of this particular film. Oh yeah, it's just, it's just lovely. Now, had you been familiar with the books? Did you know about them? No, or? I didn't know about the books at all. I mean, I was sent the script and I read the script first and then was introduced to the books afterwards. And then have then since given them to nieces and nephews and younger people that I that I know who are obsessed in the books now. You know. Yeah, it's very popular with the with kids. And I won't read past the first three because this film's based on the first two, and I I want to know what hap I only want to know what happens <laughs> if if we get to continue. You know? I was going to say hopefully that yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. I don't want to know otherwise. Okay, so you're you're an actor. You're used to working across people, real people interaction. For this you got to work on your own. Yeah. What was that like for you as an actor, the experience? <sighs> yeah, it was tough, you know, it was, uh, it was a whole new experience and you, you know, you're really forced to kind of use your imagination. I mean, you're really, you, you have to sort of dream up all this landscape that, you know, these animators are going to put in yeah. later on. But I mean, at the beginning of the film, Zach um, gave me this incredible book of, you know, what they hope to achieve with the animation. It, it just had stills of what the owls look like and how they moved and, what Soren was all about, and you know, and it was really helpful to just sort of feed my imagination in that way, I guess. How did you develop him? Because Soren is so full of wonder and hope, and you know, and and so how does that influence your your voice acting? Yeah, well, it was a challenge to sort of get him, and he's a lot younger than I am, you know. So it was a challenge to sort of find a voice that wasn't putting on a baby's voice or a kid's voice, which it just wouldn't have worked. Um, so I guess just, yeah, just that. I mean, it was to sort of fill your voice with sort of wonderment and enthusiasm and that sort of, that seemed to just work on its own and mix that with the Australian accent where they go up after everything they say and it just sort of seems to like, it seemed to work okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you because here you are, a Brit, you know, through yeah. and through and you've got to do that Australian thing. I know, yeah, I never make it easy for myself, do I? <laughs> But that's good. That's good to challenge yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, there's the there's a bunch of themes going on in this film. But first I want to talk about the sibling rivalry thing. Now, you yeah. have a sister, I believe? I've got a brother and a sister. Okay, you have a brother and a sister. Very so, much like so. I've got an older brother and a younger sister. Oh, so perfect. Okay, perfect. couldn't have cast any yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what was that like for you? Did you did you put that into your thoughts when you, you know, thinking about your own brother and sister relationship? Yeah, of course. I mean, you do to a certain extent. You know, I mean, you do and you don't. I mean, you know, I, I hate to say that I was deeply, like, immersed in my, you know, relationships with my brother and sister whilst doing this film but yeah you know when you're making a scene where you've just lost your sister or your brother's mm -hmm. turned against you somewhere in your subconscious you, you use your own you know experiences and you know what would happen if that would happen to my real brother or my real brother treat me like that or my little sister was captured in that way of course you you, yeah. you, you sort of pull up pull on those yeah, you well, yeah, you have to. And then, of course, the the big theme is meeting your heroes. And I was wondering, you know, is there anybody that you've met, especially just you know, in, in your working career so far, or even in real life, that you've met that somebody you've so looked up to, and it was just really beyond your expectation when you met them? Yeah, I mean, meeting an actor like Ed Harris was just a massive deal for me when I made a film called The Way Back, and I was lucky enough to work, you know, and go on an incredible journey with with you know someone like Ed Harris. And he's one of the best actors around, you know, so to sort of be in this film with this amazing actor who became a friend and we went through such an incredible journey, all of us did, you know, as a group of us, mm. you know, that, that had a pretty similar... Kind what about of Paul McCartney? I've never met Paul McCartney. You didn't end up meeting him? I no, thought you had met him I after met you... I met Ringo Starr okay. and I never met Paul McCartney and I'd love to, I'd love to meet Paul McCartney. We've got to hook you up with Paul because, if boy, can... that movie, you still stand out for me and your singing in that movie was so spectacular. Oh, thank you. Ugh, when are we going to have another musical from you, by the way? I don't know, you know, I try, I try to weave in a song here and there, it never seems to work, you know. <laughs>
<laughs> Let me talk to your people. <laughs> um, what, so next up, we're going to see you in a film with Anne Hathaway, which I understand that you just wrapped. Yeah, uh, we finished wow. on Friday. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. That sounds really great. Yeah, it's a film called One Day. It's based off an incredible, really fun, amazing book uh, by a writer called David Nichols called One Day. And it's, uh, it's a story of these two characters who meet on the 15th of July back in 1988. And uh, you see their journey as people, you know, not necessarily as lovers or in a relationship, but you just see their journey as people for 20 years and you see the same date, the 15th of July, every year for 20 years as you, as you sort of weave in and out of their, their lives, you know. How'd you like working with Anne? She was amazing. What an amazing, she's, you know, super smart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. I can't wait to see and that. A, and a, a, you know, fun, super smart, all good. Yeah, she's, she's the real deal, yeah, I have yeah. to say for sure. Now, but going back to this a little bit, I want to ask you about working with Zack Snyder because the guy has, uh, his imagination just blows me away. I mean, we've seen what he's given us with, from Watchmen and 300 and all these movies. How did he help you as a director and why was he the right guy to, to make this film in particular? Yeah, for that reason, I mean, he's, he's just got such a visual style which comes through in this, in this film too, you know. And uh, you know he is—he does just work, think so epically and visually, and you get that from all of his films, you know. And uh, and he was perfect choice to to make a film about you know these warrior owls, you know, and the you know just to get his way around some of those battle scenes, which I, I mean they were breathtaking. I've never seen anything like it in my life, you know. And I saw the film for the first time last night, but he was great from an acting point of view as well. I mean his ears were wide open. I mean. We often were in different countries when we were doing the sessions. So he might be in Australia and I might be in England. It might be sort of three o'clock in the morning for him and it was wrapping up for a night for me, you know. But, you know, he was so delicate and so listening to all the little nuances of your voice and what would make it sound like it had a little more courage to it, what made it a little bit more courageous, what might give it a bit more sort of youth and enthusiasm. And, you know, I'd say, well, try it again and see it if it works coming at it from this angle or that angle. And, you know, that was impressive to know that his ears were so open and he was so, he cared so much about all those little details, you know, the voice. Yeah, well, you did a fantastic job in this. And uh, let's hope we'll have another one from you. Hear yeah. your voice again, because, yeah. you know, I do love your voice. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll try and weave in a song. In I song. want a song next time. Great talking to all you. Right, nice <laughs>